make sure I'm up on my um, devices here and then we'll get started. All right, look at it. I made a slide. Without even Reagan's help, you guys, you should be very proud of me. <laughs> I'll take that off. Okay, where am I? There I am. All right, I see YouTube or Facebook. Let me get onto YouTube. How is everybody doing? Happy Monday. As you guys can see, I'm still here in the great Northwest tundra. I think we're just about ready here. Okay. Hi, Kim Warren. Thanks for joining us. And Elizabeth from Indiana, the other I state. <laughs> How you guys doing? And Linda's Wood, son from Texas. Uh, so my name is Darlene. I'm um, the, actually the founder of Featherweight Doctor. And this week, with my family, we are away from our home studios and our shop, trying to get a little R&R uh, rest and relaxation here in the panhandle of Idaho. It's been a cold trip uh, filled with lots of um, challenges, but also a lot of downtime, which is really what I needed. So uh, this is my Ask the Doctor show, where I answer viewer questions on the featherweight in quilting or quilting on the featherweight and so I'm gonna get to I have two things to address tonight but I'm gonna say hi to a few friends first and then we're gonna get into the good stuff so let me just say hi to a few friends and then we'll get going all right miss Cindy Hinkle is on hi sweetheart hey Darlene got another four inches of snow she's in Michigan folks would rather uh, sew than shovel the white stuff 56 inches and in seven days sweet Lord Cindy that does not sound like fun. Oh, Karen's from, uh, good afternoon from Sultan, Washington. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Normally I'm in Redmond, Washington. Oh my goodness, so many people. Let me just say hi. So we have Angel on from Houston. Hi, sweetheart. Bunny <laughs> from Illinois. And Jeanette, hello, hello. Sue Marshall, hi. Kim Paulson, hello, hello. Finally out of COVID quarantine for 11 days. Thank goodness. Welcome out, Kim. Uh, Carolyn is on, and Jen Jen, and Kathleen from SoCal. Ka you know what? Kathleen, that's just sour grapes. No one wants to know that Southern California was 65 degrees today. They don't. We're all jealous. It's okay. Hi, Pam Green. Uh, oh, and 10 degrees for Linda in Texas. I have a special message for my Texas folks tonight. Hi, Michelle from um, Oklahoma, Grove, Oklahoma, and Annie. Hi, Annie. We just talked just a few minutes ago. Noretta, hello from Iowa. <laughs> Pauline from Texas says her power just came on a few minutes ago. And Lisa, hi Lisa from sunny Mesa, Arizona. <laughs> Nancy from Lake Stevens, Bridget from Rimrock. It, it is cold. It's 23 degrees outside. Melanie, hello. Okay, Mel. Oh, good, Mel. Hi, Mel. You're already in Florida. Good Lord. Oh, I got a hearing compliment. Look at my little antique sewing dangles. <laughs> Hi Wendell, Shirley Goff from Southern or from South Carolina and we have Nancy on from Snowy Ohio and Fran is on. Hi Fran. I'm pretty sure Fran's in Indiana actually. Okay I'm getting a call. I'm going to just not to answer the call. Okay thanks guys for joining me. Well we have some fun stuff tonight as just to give you guys all an update, we're still here in Arizona, uh, or not Arizona. <laughs> wow, I swear I'm drinking carbonated water only. <laughs> we are in Idaho. Uh, this the snowstorm that uh, uh, hit the Puget Sound uh, a couple days ago is now getting over here to the Panhandle. So we're expecting six to 10 inches of snow here at our trailer and it's been lovely and dreamy and there is nothing in my opinion more beautiful than like a, a freshly topped evergreen with with snow on the boughs uh, uh, Lisa the refrigerator is still broken <laughs> thanks for asking we have a replacement on the way it should be here Wednesday so 
everybody uh, cross their fingers. Um, <laughs> we're warm. We, Sandy and Martin, we are warm. We just don't have inside refrigeration, but when it's 23 degrees outside, you keep a cooler. It's no big deal. I just don't really care for putting snow boots on in a coat to get my half and half or my coffee first thing in the morning, but that's okay. I'm a hearty girl. I'm a hearty girl. Uh, so tonight uh, is my Ask the Doctor show, and we have two items that we need to address um, for some viewers. Uh, the first one came from Angel, actually, in Houston, who's watching tonight, and she was asking, um, I think it was Angel, oh, was it someone from, but they wanted to know when I was talking about proper border technique for adding borders on a quilt. Um, what were some tips and tricks for doing that? So we're going to talk about that tonight. And then uh, Fran Baldwin, who normally is joining us, is not on yet. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Hang on. My camera is just... Uh, hold on. Sorry. There we are. Good Lord. Okay. Um, she was asking about some electrical problems with their motor. And I know that my friend Beth... Um, who is also watching uh, was also having some electrical problems so uh, specifically Fran's problem was a popping noise that sounded like it was coming from the belt or the motor area every once in a while so and she was talking about a short I what I would advise you to do Fran is to um, take your motor uh, and the where it's hardwired into the back of the machine and there's a that terminal receptacle, which is the plug that you plug your electrical cord into. Take a flathead screwdriver and undo the screw at the top of it so you can pull the electrical receptacle forward. Not like all the way out because you don't want to like put stress on the wires, but just make sure that you have really good connection. Um, usually you have a, um, a wire that has like a fabric um, protector on it. And then um, it connects to a ring uh, <laughs> uh, and just make sure you have a, enough wire connections that are soldered to the ring to make a good connection and then it's also a tight connection with the screw down uh, plastic caps on the back if that is not the issue then the other thing it could be is your carbon brushes are getting low so on the top of the motor there is a, a plastic um, like cap be very ginger with that because it is plastic and it's probably fragile from being vintage. Uh, but use a big flathead screwdriver to very gently get it unseated and then use your fingers to take it all the way out. You'll see a little spring pop up as soon as you take the plastic cap off. Um, and when you do that, what I want you to do is very carefully and intentionally pull the, the spring out with the carbon brush still attached. And what you're going to see, you should see a half an inch to a quarter inch of a, of a, of a carbon uh, rectangle. There will be an indent on the bottom of the rectangle that, um, that fits on the shaft. So make sure however you pull out the spring with the carbon brush on the bottom, it goes back in the exact same way. If you do have less than a quarter of an inch on your carbon brush, those need to be replaced. Uh, we sell replacements out on the website. I don't think the part number is on the website, but I do have replacements so you can contact the shop at info, I-N-F-O at featherweightdoctor.com. There is an upper and a lower brush. You can assume that they are changed at the same time. So if your upper brush looks like it needs to be replaced, you can assume that the bottom one also needs to be replaced at the same time. So check those two areas if you're experiencing intermittent machine power machine surges or a, that popping noise. It's it's the carbon the carbon brushes that are getting low. Um, I'll po have Ray post a picture on my story later on of like the worst carbon brush um, I've ever seen. Most of the time when machines come through service in our department, I check them every single time to make sure that they have at least a quarter of an inch left on them. But um, one time I had a machine come in for service and it was literally almost down to the metal spring. Yeek! That is way too short. So it isn't something that you have to do unless you are experiencing some intermittent power issues or popping noises, but just so everybody knows where to go looking, that's where you go look. And I'm very happy to help people out if uh, if you get stuck on that. Okay, let's see here. 
Ouch. <laughs> oh, people are losing power. Yes, Fran is in Indiana. I thought so. So if I get, if I get, yeah. Oh, Elizabeth, it was you with the borders. Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, all right. So that is uh, issue number one that we're going to talk about. Issue number two we're going to talk about is borders. Now, I'm going to go to my lower camera here. Oh, real quick. Before we do that, I have to show you guys a picture. My mom-in-law is the quilter. She was the bad influence that influenced me a couple of years ago, um, like 25 years ago. Um, and so she recently de redid her whole studio and she borrowed an idea that she saw from the owner of Stitch and Haven. I have to show you what she did here. It is, look at how cool that is. I, my cutting station is in a closet and I have a rung right above my cutting station. I am totally going to put, where did my camera go? Oop, oop. Well, that's, sorry guys. I uh, just lost my camera. There I am. Okay, I'm gonna totally try this when I get home because I have rulers and they're always getting in the way with stacks in the back of my thing. I'm totally excited to try that. So thank you Quilt and Camper for sending that picture over to me. I thought that was an excellent way of storing your rulers in your studio. Do the worst carbon brushes mean they have been used a bunch? Um, it does mean that the motor has gotten some use, but it's not usually a bad thing. What's a bad thing is if you let them run all the way down and then it meets that metal spring and sparks, that's bad. So you want to replace the carbon brushing, brushes if they are a quarter inch or shorter close to that metal spring that holds it down. I know, isn't that awesome? Hi, Linda from Tennessee. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so go back to my lower camera here. Okay, first of all, for those of you joining me for winter solstice, look at our next block. Oh, wait, it's up and down. Okay. It's, um, they're little coffee mugs. I have to ask you guys a design question later, but let's check about borders first. So it is a common misconception with when doing borders on a quilt. Whenever you get the pattern, um, you will, um, get all your cutting instructions and they tell you to cut the um they tell you to cut the borders at the time you're cutting the rest of the quilt. Don't do it. Oh, what did I just do? Don't do it. Wait. The designer is giving you those measurements based on the fact that like this little tiny block here is four inch squares. So if I have three four inch squares, we know that my approximate size is 12 and a half inches this way by eight and a half inches this way. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm human and sometimes things don't come out exactly the way that I want them to. So always wait until your center of your quilt is done before you add your borders on. Don't pre-cut them based on what the designer told you to do. Wait. And then what I want you to do is to take a measuring tape or a uh, ruler, a cutting ruler, and instead of measuring down the left side or the right side, I want you to measure down the middle of the quilt. Okay, take your measurement from the middle of the quilt. I always do the long sides of the quilt first and then I do the right and the left one, but I always take my measurement down the center of the quilt. I cut both borders together, and then if I'm off right to left, I use my steam iron to shrink or grow the sides accordingly. So when I was uh, younger, I did a quilt. I'm gonna sneeze actually. Oh, maybe not. I did a quilt and it was a ribbon quilt, so it had a lot of bias on it. It was made with jelly rolls and they were stacked up. It was beautiful, but there was eight, eight inches, and I was being careful, between the right side and the left side. So what I did was I took my measurement down the middle and I split the difference, and I had to shrink one side up four inches and um, grow one side down four inches in order to get those borders on. That's what I did. Um, if you... If, you, if I would have cut them four inches or eight inches off, the shorter side four inches down, the longer side four inches longer, um, the quilt would have never been square, first of all, and the, um, bo the border probably would have had a nice wave to it, which makes um, long arm quilters like myself absolutely crazy. 
excuse me. <laughs> Whew, goodness. Okay. So that wasn't Reagan this time. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so borders get order or, uh, done through the middle, through the middle. I do the long sides first, and then I put the upper sides on afterwards. Um, I use a ton of pins, a ton of pins, and I will sit there at the ironing board until everything lays nice and flat with steam, um, to make everything fit accordingly before I go to my sewing machine and start sewing them. So pins are your friend. I'm not a big pinner, but when it comes to borders, I'm a big pinner because I have had and done so many quilts over the years with 15 years of professional long arm quilting under my belt that just the borders were not put on right. And so I do not mess around with borders. Um, the other thing is if you are, instead of doing the traditional borders where you have the long sides cut exactly to the long length, hold on one sec here. I'll try to go back here. Um, and then I cap off the top. If you're making mitered borders, you need to make sure that your border is uh, just longer than your next border up so that you have extra tails um, hanging over in order to have enough room to do the 45 degree miter. Um, but maybe when I'm back at my home studio and I have a little bit more room in a full size table, I can demonstrate mitered borders. Uh, Everybody is intimidated by them. It's really not as difficult as um, people make them out to be. And they have a really nice, especially if you're dealing with like a border print um, where you buy extra yardage just to get all your borders in one um one stretch to have that miter look which is the 45 degree at the corner so <laughs> um thanks this makes sense oh good i'm glad this makes sense and be sure to match the middle border the middle of the border too yes 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 for sure so that's a great suggestion lisa i start pinning my borders in the middle and then work my way out to the outer edge and i mark each middle so that way um the middle of the quilt is is true on both sides before i start that's a great suggestion <laughs> you got tula pins today melanie <gasps> you'll have to send me a picture <laughs> therese i do have a dainty sneeze my daughter does not have a dainty sneeze. She did not get her sneeze from her mother. She got it from someone else. <laughs> All right. So that is how you put a border on properly. It doesn't matter how many layers of borders you put on, whether it's two or three. Um, you, you follow the exact same procedure with every round of borders. Measure from the middle, pin the middle, um, pin from the middle and then stitch down. So that was a really good question. And honestly, when you get as far down the road with your quilting journey as some people are, you forget about basic things like that. And it really, I remember being in a class when I was still learning. It was when I first started quilting, we didn't have YouTube, bless YouTube, uh, to be able to go and watch videos on how to do things. We just kind of had to figure things out on our own. And then learning how to do things the right way the first time is always better than having to undo bad habits that you've developed from not doing things the right way. So, Oh, Mel. Mel went shopping, you guys, in Florida. She said, lots of Tula fabric, too. Waited until I could be present in the real store to choose. Eek! Very fun! All right, you guys. Well, I think my internet connection is kind of going up and down. So I am going to pop off. Oh, good. I didn't miss anything. Um, if you have any other questions for me that you would like me to address during these featherweight university ask the doctor sessions i would love if you would email me at info i n f o at featherweight doctor.com so i can address your individual concern on camera because chances are other people are having the same questions or concerns Yes, we do still do not have a working fridge. The outside works as a great refrigerator when it's 23 degrees. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for a few minutes. Uh, we should be uh, transitioning home tomorrow. 
Um, the mountain passes will have had enough time to thaw. It might not be a fun ride, but we should be home tomorrow, which means that Wednesday for the Quilt As You Go will be in my my studio again. I wanted to get your opinion real quick. Maybe you guys, some of you guys can email me um, on my block here. Uh, maybe do it like this. I have these open spaces. You guys see my little cups? And I was thinking it'd be fun to put some words in here, like to quilt them in cursive, like coffee or hot cocoa or latte or espresso what do you guys think about that I was thinking I could like write it out in cursive and then use my free motion skills to actually trace it out I think that sounds like kind of a fun thing to do I might have to do that <laughs> Um, anyway, well, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back on Wednesday and then again on Friday for the sip and sew. I hope everybody stays warm, especially you Texans who are not used to these types of freezing, frigid temperatures. Stay warm, stay toasty, and thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great night. Bye, guys.